Hi everyone, we're excited to start our 2017 weekly video update series. With all the snow disappearing from fields very quickly, it's time to take a look at our planters and get them ready for the field. I'm here with area agronomist Michael Weir and he's going to talk about a few things that we need to keep in mind before spring. Thanks Ben. Well, what, what I'm looking at doing is when I'm going through the planter, there's really 10 key things that I'm looking at as we head into the spring going through our planter. And the first one that we're going to want to look at is when we pull our planter out, we're going to want to fold it out, set it down and make sure our planter is nice and level. And this is just simply done by putting it down to the level where it's going to be planting, set the level on it and make sure it's nice and level to make sure that our row unit is working properly, our trash whippers aren't digging too deep and our closing wheels are doing the job that they should be doing. After we've checked our planter to make sure it's nice and level, the next thing we're going to want to go through is our row units. And the first thing we look at on our row units is our parallel linkage. This is what holds that row unit in place and we're going to want to make sure there's no slop in this. So to do that, we simply just grab the parallel linkage system here and shake it back and forth to make sure there's no slop. If there's slop, we're going to want to look at replacing the bushings on this, on this parallel linkage system. The next thing we're going to want to look at is, is our drive system. We're going to want to, look, want to look at the chains that drive this system and make sure that they're all, they're all nice and loose. There's no, no kinks in the chain that cause chattering in the row units. This can cause really poor singulation within that row unit. After we've looked at the drive system to make sure there's no kink chains, we're going to want to get down and dirty and look at the gauge wheels on the, on the row units. So simply looking at the gauge wheels, we want to make sure that there's no slop in them. These ones are working very well, there's no slop, and we want to make sure there's a little bit of resistance on the disc openers when we turn it. And as you can see by doing so, there is some resistance. This is what you want to see. Once we've seen that our gauge wheels are working properly, the next thing we're going to want to do is remove them and check our disc openers to make sure that there isn't too much wear on them. As you can see, this disc opener here has been replaced because once the gauge wheel is taken off and we look at the width of the old disc opener, we can see that our, our length here is at 14 inches. Once we get down to 14 inches, John Deere recommends that we replace the disc openers. After we've looked at our, our wear on our disc, we want to make sure that our, our discs are slightly touching on either side. And to do this, we, we just simply use the business card method. And what I've done is inserted a business card on the bottom and on the top here to where the discs are touching each other. And the distance we want between these business cards is anywhere from two to two and a half inches. And as you can see from my tape measure, we're right on two and a half, so this is perfect. What this does is ensures that we have a good seed bed with a nice V seed bed that seed falls into. If these business cards are too close to each other, what we get is a W pattern. We get inconsistent seed depth. Once we've checked our gauge wheels and our disc openers to make sure they're, they're ready to go, we want to look at our seed tube guard as well as our seed tubes to make sure there isn't too much wear on them. If we do have some wear, it's time to replace those seed tubes. You're also going to want to look at your, your scraper that clean off your, your seed disc openers. We have an old one held up to a new one here and as you can see there's a lot of wear on, on the old one here so it was time to replace it with a new one. We're now on the back end of our row unit and we got to have a look at our closing wheels. And simply just turn your closing wheels and make sure there isn't any wear and tear on them. Make sure your bearings are, are nice and free moving um, to make sure that we're going to get good closure of that, of that seed roll. And then finally, the, the next thing we're going to want to look at is make sure that our seed row is lined with the middle of our closing wheels here. And to do that, simply we unfold our planter, set it down, drive forward five feet, and make sure that, that the disc opener line is right in the center of the closing wheels. A few final steps to look at your planter are to make sure that you have good uniform distribution of weight across your toolbar. So with a lot of the wider implements we have nowadays, and with GPS, we're taking, sometimes we take the markers off them and that can, that can throw off our distribution of weight. As you can see on this planter, weights have been added to make sure that that consistent weight has been spread across the toolbar so we get good consistent down pressure. On this particular planter, we don't have any trash movers, but you're gonna wanna go through them to make sure they're, they're running properly, they're, they're running freely, um, they're set properly. And then finally, the last thing we're gonna wanna look at, if you have a liquid kit set up on your planter, Make sure the lines are flushed out, the orifices aren't plugged up, and make sure they're running 
um, they're metering out a very consistent amount of product down each, each uh, seed, seed tube. As you're going through your planter, if you have any additional questions, be sure to contact Mark Cutlet Seeds or your equipment dealer to ask any questions as you're going through there. With that, I want to thank you for your time and we look forward to seeing you this summer.